All right. Well, thank you so much. I mean, we've got a full house. That's awesome. Um, so I want to introduce myself real quick. Uh, my name is Marcus Eaton. Um, I'm primarily uh, a fan of IceCast because I have a large music collection, and devices don't always have a ton of storage on hand, like your phone or your tablet or even your laptop sometimes. So it's nice to be able to have an option to stream across a network from a NAS or a home computer. Um, so real quick before I get started, I just want to get an idea of where people are at in terms of knowledge of IceCast um, and Linux in general. So who here, it's their first time at Linux Fest, raise your hand. Cool, awesome. Well, thank you for coming. I'm sure you guys are going to like it and want to come back next year. Um, and then one other quick question is, who else uh, streams music at this point using Pandora or Spotify, any sort of stuff like that? Cool, okay, awesome. Alrighty, so we're first going to kind of get into the why of um, uh, why we uh, want to kind of set up this IceCast system. Um, and there's a couple reasons. Um, some of them are kind of more personal, but some of them I think also uh, make sense compared to what the services kind of have to offer. Um, main thing is that with Pandora and Spotify, they're premium services. You either have to pay money or listen to ads in order to um, really get that full experience. And I want to have more uh, ability to just listen to what I want to listen to, not listen to ads and not have to skip songs that I don't care for. Instead, I want to be able to skip and make my own playlist and just kind of have that freedom to choose what sort of music I want to listen to. Um, plus, also on top of that, if you've read some of their EULAs, sometimes uh, they can collect some data on you that some people might not agree with. Um, a lot of advertising data tends to be collected with Spotify especially, since they're kind of a, a free service um, with a lot of advertising built in. Um, but that's the cool thing about IceCast, is that it's free and open source, so you don't have to worry about a specific terms of service agreement or worry about advertising and having your data collected and that sort of thing. So real quick, I want to talk about the prereqs for setting up an IceCast server. Um, there's a couple things you have to take into consideration before you set something up like this. Um, mainly what you're going to want to focus on is how much bandwidth you have. If you're hosting this from home, you have to make sure that your upload speed is decent enough that you can handle streaming this audio. Um, and that's where we're going to get into a discuss quick discussion about what variable bit rate and constant bit rate and audio files are, because it's kind of important to uh, setting up this sort of thing. With variable bit rate, what happens is, is that there is a scale of the quality of the media file plays at, and that's depending on a setting that when the media file is encoded, um, that basically specifies, I can be from anywhere from 256 kilobits per second to 320 kilobits per second. And you have to have enough upload bandwidth to be able to constantly pump that data out at a regular rate um, without having any sort of buffering going on. Um, so, for example, if you want to pump out 256K audio, you need to have an upload that will support that. And there's a formula, actually, that um, we'll get into that I can talk about to kind of determine that. Um, the bottom line is you kind of have to uh, multiply, no, divide by 8, and then if it's stereo, multiply by 2. There's actually a link I'm going to be giving you guys at the end of the presentation where you can kind of put it into a calculator, so to speak, and kind of figure out what upload speed you need. So there's that. With constant bit rate, um, it's always going to be the same amount the entire time. So it's a little bit easier to calculate, uh, but the downside is, is that you're going to be using all that bandwidth all the time, whereas with variable bit rate, um, you kind of have some more wiggle room, so to speak. Um, another prereq is going to be the... Uh, legality of streaming copyrighted music. And this is kind of a, a difficult one to uh, classify. Uh, I actually ended up talking with a lawyer uh, for about an hour, hour and a half, and we went back and forth over this. And I think the conclusion we came to was is that, technically speaking, you need to purchase a license if you're going to be playing copyrighted music. But if you password protect it properly, the chances of has someone coming in saying, no, you're not allowed to do this is minimal at best. But I will put up a disclaimer saying that uh, if you do pursue anything like this, um, you know, I don't take any responsibility for it. There it is in writing. So please don't sue me. Thank you. <laughs> um, so that's another aspect you have to think about. And then finally, you also have to think about what sort of computer you're going to be using to doing this streaming. It needs to have a decent enough CPU to handle encoding. Um, if you're going to be doing re-encoding from AUG to MP3 or vice versa um, and using a format that IceCast doesn't natively support and you'll have to re-encode on the fly, um, you'll have to have a decent enough CPU to be able to keep up. Um, so in my experience, um, I found a Raspberry Pi, first-gen Raspberry Pi, is good enough for one person. 
um, if you're having just a medium quality stream, but if you're going to be doing more than one uh, device or person connected to it, you're probably going to want to look at something with like a dual core, um, maybe even better potentially, depending on how many audio streams you have going at the same time. Um, and then you also need to kind of take into factor storage space, because again, you're going to have a big music collection, you're going to need to be able to store all that music somewhere. Um, either on the local computer or on a NAS somewhere, it's got to go somewhere. So, all right, so that's all the boring stuff out of the way. Now let's actually get into the configuration files. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and install, I'm running OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, so I'm just going to be using the package manager for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. This is probably the only part that's going to vary between your distribution that you use and the distribution that I use. Just use your package manager and uh, install these three programs. You're going to want MPD, NC, MPCPP, and you're going to want IceCast. Sometimes, depending on distro, it can be also called IceCast2. Just make sure to use your distro's package search functionality um, to determine what the correct package name is. So I'm going to go ahead and install those and put in my root password. Give it a second to think here. You'll probably have to retrieve some repository data. Yep, and then I'll go ahead and install those. And we're good to go. Perfect. So then, next up, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start going through the NPD configuration file. Uh, let's see. So, oh, let's see. Okay. Can anybody, is that too dark? Yeah, that's too dark. Okay. Give me a minute here. Of course, Emacs wants to color everything and make it look pretty, so. Uh, is that better? better yeah. Cool. Thanks. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> All right. So um, it looks intimidating at first, but I'd say about 95% of this config file is comments to help you get through it. So don't be too afraid of the fact that it's about 1,000 lines long. <laughs> um, so the first off is going to be the music directory. This is a pretty simple config. It's basically going to be where are you storing your music. Um, I always like to put it in the var lib mpd directory, um, just so that way I have kind of a dedicated directory for my music files that I want to serve through mpd. Um, by default, it defaults to a music directory that's in your home dir. Um, either way is fine, as long as mpd has permissions to actually access it, that's kind of the key thing. Um, for the playlist directory, um, I'm also going to leave that as the default. Uh, basically, you can customize multiple playlists and have mpd um, basically treat it as if it's a playlist, just like in a regular media player. So if you have a playlist for workout music or, you know, music to go to sleep to, that sort of thing, you can kind of switch between those presets easily. Um, and then the DB file, this is kind of important. Um, this file is basically something that helps you keep track of all of the media files that have been added to your MPD installation. Um, it's kind of a central database to keep everything straight and where's the path and where's the tags for this file and what sort of properties this file have. So it's kind of an important thing that MPD needs. You can run MPD without one, um, but in my experience, it doesn't work as well. Um, for the log file, I'm just going to leave it as defaulting to the syslog, uh, mainly because I'm fine with having my uh, system daemon and just log all the error messages. Um, if you want to go to a text file, you can put in a path here instead of just the word syslog. Um, and then the PID file, this is going to be crucial for when we're testing out MPD and making sure our config is OK. Um, this is basically going to allow us to start up MPD with verbose options and allow it to not go to the background as a daemon. So that way we can easily kill it, I'll modify the config, and then restart it again and kind of keep prototyping and testing. So um, for the state and sticker file, I don't particularly use them. Um, you can kind of ignore them. If you feel like you want to use them, uh, you can go for that. Uh, there's more details on the MPD website for uh, information about that. So here we get to what user we want MPD to run as. You're going to want it to set to MPD and make sure to uncomment that line. If you don't uncomment that line, it'll try to run it as your user, which you probably won't have permissions to access some of the stuff like, say, the audio card. Depends on your distribution. Um, and then also, same case here, you're going to want to uncomment the group uh, option. Make sure that it has access to the audio card as well. Um, here's where we get to some more important stuff. This is going to be binding on the network. Um, since MPD is basically only going to be taking the audio bits from the hard drive and then passing them on to IceCast, we're just going to bind to localhost. We don't need it to go over the network. MPD does support um, something that's similar to IceCast where it can do an HTTP stream, but it doesn't provide any form of authentication, which we're going to be getting into a bit later. 
um, and it's not quite as flexible. So we're going to want to set that to localhost. And then we're going to leave the Unix socket um, commented out for now. And I'm going to set the port explicitly just to be on the safe side. Um, you can change the port number if you want, but again, since we're just doing it over the localhost, it's not really necessary. Um, and we'll leave the log level default and the gapless MP3 playback as the default as well. If you do have issues with your MP3 files um, stopping all of a sudden when you're uh, playing them through IceCast, uh, come back and then set this option to no. Um, and then also they've got a link here, um, willwap.co.uk, for a fix on some MP3 files. There's a quirk with MP3 files that are VBR and having a um, early end to the file when it's being played through IceCast. Um, and then here, this setting is kind of interesting. Uh, this is actually a recent addition to MPD. Um, this basically, if you take the server down then you boot it back up, um, by default what MPD is going to do is it's going to start playing the music again, even though you're not necessarily connected to the audio stream. So if, say, you don't want the media to play while um, after you've done a reboot, you can set this to yes and then the music will be paused. Um, compared to the last time when you brought MPD down. Um, I have it set to no just for our purposes, but this is an option you can play with depending on your usage. And if you have questions at any point, just raise your hand and I'll pick on you. <laughs> um, for absolute playlist, uh, pass and playlists, um, I'm not going to be using this in our case because we're going to be making the playlist natively through NCMPCPP, but um, you can use this if you want to be able to import, say, M3U playlists from another <coughs> computer. Um, and then the metadata to use, that also can be customized depending on what sort of ID v3 tags you have in your media files. Um, I'm honestly just going to leave this as default because it's a pretty sane default and makes a lot of sense. Gives me just enough information, but not too much. Um, this I'm going to want to definitely uncomment. This will basically automatically scan the MPD music directory for any new files that are added and then add those to the MPD database so we can access them. Um, and then if you have multiple subdirectories within your music database, this is what you can use to kind of control how deep it goes so you don't spend an hour scanning your media files. Um, kind of important if you have a lot of subdirectories and not all of them have media files in them. Um, Symlink stuff, so if you're using Symlinks, you can customize the behavior here. A lot of this I'm skipping over because it's not really necessary to what we want to do. Um, the ZeroConf and Avahai setup, this is if you want to be able to publish the service over your local network. Again, it's an optional thing. I'm going to leave it disabled for now. Uh, permissions, this is going to be really important. Basically, this is what's going to prevent anybody from running NC MPCPP and modifying your MPD settings. Um, the format here is actually, it looks complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Pretty much the password is going to be whatever we set it to, so I'm just going to set it to example. Don't use these passwords, by the way. They're totally not secure. Pick something that's totally unique. Um, and then these are the permissions. So there's four permission uh, types that you can give to a user. Um, you can have read, add, control, and admin. Read is basically a read-only state. Add allows you to add music files but not take away anything. Control allows you to do play, pause, stop, uh, fast forward, um, go back, that sort of thing. And then admin allows you to do stuff like change the password, change the audio sources, that sort of thing. So, and then if you also notice the default permissions, this is basically if you do a passwordless login. Um, by default, it has the same permissions as effectively the admin. We want to fix that. And the best way to fix that is just to blank out this whole thing and just leave it as two double quotes. Um, so then here, this is all stuff uh, relating to different types of input and output we can send MPD. MPD basically um, is kind of a simple program in the sense that you don't actually directly control it. MPD literally all it does is it starts up, it reads its config file, it goes and looks at the directory that the music files are in, and then starts taking the bits of data, their audio, and then pushing them out through whatever output you design, uh, specified. So that could be, for example, a sound card. So by default, it's set to go out of your sound card, but we want to have it go out to an IceCast server. So we're actually going to comment out this whole block here of uh, the audio output. So this will be a little bit of work here, but... Um, and then also if you have a, like an OSS output instead of an ALSA output, you can also go that route as well. So then here is the kind of the meat of MPD right here in this config file. This is where we're going to be spending a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and first uncomment everything. Okay. So then the type is going to be uh, shout, 
Technically speaking, um, IceCast is initially based off of Shoutcast, which if, if any of you are familiar with Winamp back in the day, that's kind of a Winamp uh, service that they offered. Um, IceCast is kind of an open source extension to that, or a, a evolution to that. So, um, and then encoding type, this is where um, uh, you can get a little customized with how you want to encode your media files over the network. Um, I'm setting it to AUG just because I'm a fan of AUG and I personally like it. If you have more MP3 files, you might want to set this to MP3. You always have to make sure that you have MP3 support set up in your distro uh, and make sure that uh, the MPD installation on the distro is supporting that as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, you can also convert your media files to AUG as well. There's a AUG ENC2 on the command line. Uh, it works really well for converting your files to AUG format. Um, so the name here is basically just going to be the title of the screen, uh, the uh, stream. So I'm just going to name it like Linux Fest. Um, and then the host, uh, we're going to have it set as localhost. Uh, again, because MPD is just being on the local host. Um, IceCast is where we're actually going to specify the network address of whatever system we'd be using. Um, and then we'll also leave the port as the default. Um, and then the mount here, you're going to want to change this from the default. Um, you can not change it, but I prefer to change it so that way you don't have any conflictions going on. Um, if you have multiple uh, shout uh, streams going on, this will need to be different for each one. It will need to have a different file name. Um, and then also it's key to making sure that uh, the extension matches the encoding. Uh, if they don't match, then your web browser or sometimes some media players can get a little confused. Um, the password, uh, change this as implied by the default value. <laughs> They have a sense of humor. Um, and then here's kind of one of the big hang-ups when people are actually configuring MPD. Um, you can see that I've uncommented both quality and bitrate. You only are allowed to uncomment one of those. Um, quality is for your VBR, like we talked about earlier, where we can have variable bit rates. And then bitrate is basically specifying an explicit constant bitrate to stream at. Um, so in this case, I'm going to go with VBR, and I'll just comment out bitrate. Um, format, so this looks a little obtuse. Um, but I'll break it down for you. So this is going to be the sample rate of the audio that's coming out of IceCast. Um, generally, you'll want to leave this alone unless, for whatever reason, your sound card that you're streaming to supports something like 96 kilohertz audio and you want really high quality audio. Um, but generally, you'll leave this alone. Uh, 16, again, this has more to do with sound card stuff. This is 16-bit audio. You can change this up to 32, again, if your audio card supports it. And then this one here means that the stream is going to be in mono. If I want it to be in stereo, I can put in two. Um, the thing to consider here is that if you set it to stereo, you're going to be sending two audio channels over your network instead of one, which is going to effectively double your bandwidth requirements. So do keep that in mind. Um, generally, stereo is enough for most applications, and I want to save bandwidth, so I'm going to go with stereo, uh, mono in this case. Uh, protocol, they've specified this as optional, but I'm going to explicitly set it to IceCast 2. Uh, mainly because we want to be able to use those new nice features that IceCast 2 has over IceCast 1. Um, the username, uh, you're going to want to leave this as the default. If you want to change it for extra security, you can, but it does break compatibility with some stuff. Some stuff is expecting this username to always be source, and that's what it defaults to if you leave this commented out entirely. So um, generally just make sure that your username matches up with whatever program you're using and whatever config files you have set up. Uh, description, this is going to be, whoops, hit the page down key, there we go. Um, description is going to be basically uh, a long form description, which we're just going to change this to example stream, I think will be fine. Um, in here, basically, you're just going to specify uh, details about the stream. This would be important if you're running a public radio station online and you were publishing to a directory um, for people to go and look and search for different types of radio stations because um, this will basically kind of be your selling point, so to speak, for people to come and listen. Um, and then also your website, again, this is kind of more of an advertising thing. I'm just going to leave this as the default. Uh, genre, again, that's kind of more of a stream thing. I'm just going to leave that as the default as well. Uh, public, this is the one we're going to want to make sure to set to no. Uh, basically, it will not publish this radio station out to the um, directories online that people have. Um, and then the timeout and the mixer type, we can just leave those at the default as well. So, um, and then if you go down here, you also have a lot more options besides just IceCast as well. This is just more stuff that MPD can do, just kind of showing you how flexible MT MPD can be. Um, you can even, like I was saying earlier, do your own stream through MPD exclusively, although that doesn't give you any of the features that IceCast has, like password authentication.
um, a pulse audio output, um, a WinMM output, OpenAL output, pipe, a whole bunch of stuff. There's a lot of uh, options. You also have stuff like replay gain as well that MPD supports, um, some character encoding stuff. And then also, for whatever reason, they also um, threw in support for SID files, which are from the Commodore 64. I don't know why they decided to do that, but cool, I guess. If you want to use it, go for it, I'd say. So I'm going to go ahead and write this file and then go ahead and close it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and test the MPD configuration. I'm going to do an MPD-V um, and then also a dash dash no daemon. And it looks like it's perfectly fine. We didn't have any errors, so we should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start it through my system daemon. Start MPD service. And if I did everything right, no errors. Cool. So that's one of the two config files we'll need to be looking at. Um, and then if we want to check to see if it's running, uh, I will do a sudo system ctl um, status mpd.service. Oh, we do have an error. Okay. So it looks like we don't have a directory file, or we don't have the music directory made, and we don't have a database. So we'll go ahead and fix that real quick. Let's see. And sudo touch db and sudo music. And don't worry if you guys can't follow along, this is being recorded so you can go back and look over it. Um, and if you need me to slow down, I can. <laughs> um, let's see. And we will also own the mpd.db file. Okay. And I will go ahead and stop the mpd service. And then go ahead and restart it again. And we will do a listing. And hey, there we go. It looks like it's running perfectly fine. Cool. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and look at the IceCast configuration file. Uh, who here likes XML? <laughs> well, you're in for a treat because the IceCast, uh, uh, the IceCast config file is all in XML. So hopefully you're okay with that. <laughs> so uh, this config file is going to be even longer than the MPD one, but we'll break it down. There's a lot of, again, a lot of comments to help you get started, and there's also a lot of stuff that we won't need for our particular instance. IceCast has a lot of features, but we're primarily just going to be using the password authentication feature that it has. Um, so for this, um, you don't have to necessarily change it, but I'm going to change it anyway, and we're going to set it to Bellingham, Washington for the heck of it. And uh, we can set the admin uh, email if we want to, but honestly, I'm just going to leave it as the default. Um, so for limits, uh, since we're probably not going to be streaming to 100 people on a residential ISP upload speed, um, we'll probably back that down to 10, I think. 10 is a fair number. Um, most of this also is just kind of timeout sort of stuff. We're going to leave that as default. Um, burst on connect is a nice feature actually. So say if you have an ISP that tends to be a little slow at first when you've started a connection and then speeds up after a while, this is really helpful because what will happen is it will start to buffer the file up to a certain size and then push it all out in one big blast and then start sustaining itself. So it's kind of an important feature to have if you're on a kind of a crummier connection. Okay. And you can set that size in the burst size field. Um, you can set that to, uh, right now it's set to 665,000 uh, bytes, which is about 64K, uh, which is a fair amount. Um, so this here is going to be your source password and your relay password. We're only going to be working with the source password. In this case, I've left it as default hack me. Again, change this. Otherwise, bad things will happen. People will find your server, and they will play terrible things through it. Um, and then here is basically what you're going to be using to authenticate against the web-based um, configuration that IceCast has. We're going to definitely want to change this. 
I'm going to change this and make it my first name, and I'm going to change this and make it a slightly better password. Well, I don't know if slightly better is the right word, but that's good enough, right? One capital letter. Only take a couple hours of brute force. <laughs> So then here's where you're going to want, basically want to set the either public IP address of your server or if your server has a DNS name, you can set that here as well. In this case, I'm just going to be doing it through my local machine, so I'm just going to leave it as localhost. Um, but in this case, you'll want to set it to whatever IP address on the public internet or uh, if it has a DNS tied to it. That's what you want to configure here. Um, because otherwise, if you don't, like it says in the comments here, this host name uh, other people will use to connect to your server. It affects mainly the URLs generated by IceCast for playlists and YP listings. That's that directory service I was talking about earlier. You must configure it properly for YP listings to work. So that's important. Um, and then the port we're going to also leave as default, port 8000. Um, that's basically the socket that MPD is going to connect to. Um, so if you change the port in MPD, make sure to change it here as well. You can kind of see a parallel where if we change one thing in MPD, we need to change another thing in IceCast for them to communicate. And oftentimes the defaults are a safe bet, but if you want to change them for extra security, you can mess with that. Um, so then we're going to scroll down quite a bit. There's a lot of competent stuff out because there's a lot of examples here. Uh, let's see. Here we go. So this is the mount that we're going to want to use. So a mount on MPD was that slash and then the .og file like we were talking about earlier. Um, IceCast defines these as mounts. So um, in here you're going to want to make sure that the file name matches what was set in MPD. So we set it to lfnw.og, so we'll want to do that. And then the username here, um, we're going to want to make sure that's source like it was in the MPD config file. And then here, I'm just leaving it as hack me because that's what we had in the MPD config file. The maximum listeners, um, we can change this if we want, but we'll make it 10 just for consistency's sake. Um, we're going to comment out the dump file. We don't need that for our purposes. So I'll tell you, XML commenting is just so weird. <laughs> um, and then we're also going to comment out a fallback mount. You can configure this if you want, but again, for our purposes, we probably don't really need it. A lot of this is kind of more if you were running a public radio station and um, say, for example, you're streaming from NAS. Well, the NAS goes down while you've got a radio station going on. Um, this is your fallback saying, oh, we're experiencing technical difficulties or something along those lines. Um, and then the fallback override and fallback when full, again, that's more stuff relating to more of a public radio stream as well as the intro file. Um, so this is where it gets a little bit confusing, hidden and public. Um, public means that the server will be published to directory listings, which we don't want, so we'll set to zero. But if we set it to hidden, then what will happen is when we go into the web interface, we won't see that mount in the web interface, and it'll look like we don't have anything running. Um, the only way to access that is to remember the path name of that mount point we set up. So we'll want to leave that enabled. So that's a little bit confusing, but... Bear with me. We'll see uh, how that works in a little bit. So then authentication. So uh, IceCast authentication uses um, HT password style authentication. Um, if you've ever worked with Apache, it's kind of the same case here. Um, and then the headers. This is another form of authentication. We probably won't be using this. Um, basically, how it'll work is it depends on a refer um, in their instance that they have set up. So basically, if you have to have gone to webplayer.example.org first before you can access the IceCast server. So kind of an interesting thing. I would definitely play around with it if you have time, but um, for our sake, we're just going to set up the HT password authentication because it's a little more traditional and easier to work with. <coughs> Comment that out. So then the on connect and on disconnect. Um, these are commands that the IceCast server will run. Um, this is a new feature that IceCast recently added in version 2.3, I believe. Um, basically, what will happen is if there's no clients, it will actually stop the stream and stop encoding and save you CPU cycles. Um, the only downside is, is that can be a little bit finicky if you have a media player that's already connected and running, and then for whatever reason you get disconnected from the network on properly, you know, your Wi-Fi drops out, that sort of thing. Um, you might have to refresh or reload your media player in order to start hearing music again. So I usually like to comment these out and do it the more traditional way um, at the expense of some CPU cycles. So I know that's totally a mess, but I'll come back and clean it later. 
Um, and then here, there's some more important stuff. Um, this is basically uh, where the configuration files, as well as the files for the web interface, are stored in user share icecast on most distros. Um, just make sure to double check this. Uh, if your distro has it in a different path, uh, you'll definitely know. Because <laughs> the first time you set it up, it'll scream at you saying, I don't have this thing, I don't have that thing. Well, it's because it's in a completely different directory that icecast is expecting. Um, and then, of course, the logdir, webdir, admin root, all that sort of stuff. Generally, if you just leave that as the default, it'll pretty much just work. Um, through here, you can also configure stuff like logging, um, if you want to cheroot sort of stuff. Here's some notes from the package manager. But that's pretty much it, really, in terms of the IceCast configuration that we have to do. The only thing we're going to have to keep an eye on is up, uh, let's see, up here in the baster. If you notice how we had um, HT password authentication earlier, we don't have an actual HT password file set up yet, um, but we're going to go and do that now. So we have to go to user share icecast, and I'm going to just do it here in Emacs. Control X3. CD user share icecast. And sudo touch. So what did we have the problem? I think it was my off. So if you scroll up here, I know it's a little bit narrow, but we'll scroll over here. So you can see the file name tag. Whoops, file name tag, and then I need to hit the end key instead of page off. There we go. Uh, the value is my off, so we're going to make the file name as my off. And then that looks good. We should be good to go there. Cool, so I can go ahead and kill that shell. Okay, and go ahead and save the icecast file. Um, and then we can do a sudo system ctl icecast, oh wait, start icecast. Start icecast. Okay, and then we'll just make sure that it's running properly and I didn't goof up on the config. So we do have some warnings. We'll go ahead and check those out. Uh, okay, cool. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to copy over some music files into our directory because we need to be able to have a way to test it. Oops, if I add a wild card. There we go. So I just have a few example AUG files inside my music directory just as a test. Um, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and open up NCMPCPP. That's a crazy acronym. It stands for NCURSES Media Player Client Plus Plus. Rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> so then here we're going to put in our password, and now you have an interface that looks a little intimidating at first, but we'll, go, uh, we'll break through it here. So if you need help, you can press F1 in here, and this will show you basically all the hotkeys you need to know in NCMPCPP. Anytime you're in this file, or in this program, uh, you just hit F1 and it'll bring up this screen every single time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the browser by hitting the number 2. As you can see, we've got our five AUG files. I'm going to hold Shift and just press the arrow key, or not, maybe. <laughs> Um, okay, so you hit space to add files as, uh, uh, if you want to make a selection of files, you just hit space on each one, or if you want to select a range, if you want to select a range, let's see here, you can do, looks like capital T, and then as you move the cursor with your up and down arrow keys, it'll select files. You can also apply filters, so if you're a regex guy, this is right up your alley. Um, so then we've gone ahead and added those, and now we have them in our current queue. And then if we want to start playing, we can just hit enter. Now it's playing audio. So, and I'm also going to set repeat uh, and random, just for the heck of it, which is R and then Z. And you can see up here in the corner, it's got the letters R and Z. 
And then if you need to control your um, volume, you can go off of a screen that has a, uh, a list. And then do the plus and minus keys. So you can see up in the top corner there, the volume is going up and down as I uh, do it. So I'm going to leave it at 100%. Okay, and then to Q to get out of NCMPCPP. Now we're going to go over to our IceCast server. And we're going to go ahead and go into administration and put in the uh, admin password and username that we have. And if I can remember it. There we go. So you can see here we've got our stream. Now the reason why I didn't show up before is because we hadn't logged in yet. Um, but you're probably wondering, how do we log into this thing? Well, that's how we, we have to first log into the admin account, and then we have to click Manage Authentication here. And then add a new user. So I'll just put in my name, oops, my name, and then I'll put in, we'll do that for our password. User add failed check to error ice cast log. Okay, so. Let's go back to my terminal here. Sudo journal control dash um, XE. Okay. Not seeing an error, so. It's because Mark is already added. Uh, that's actually different. So you manually specify that in the config file, and then HT Pass is its own set of authentication. So you can have the same user with the same username and password, but the difference is that one goes into that HT password file and the other one goes into the config file. So that is a good point, though. Thank you for catching that. Um, okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and stop IceCast real quick. I swear this worked when I tried it 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Another important thing to note is that if you do kill the ice cast daemon, MPD will stop playing music because basically it's treated as if the audio card got disconnected from the PC, the PC in our sense. Um, so you'll probably want to stop both of the system daemons at the same time. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the log file. And I want to go all the way down. Failed to check status of my auth. Oh, permission denied. So it's a permission issue. So then we will go back to our IceCast directory. We should be able to own it so that the IceCast user can actually access it. And I'll just start it here. Scale start PD and then system scale start IceCast. Another important thing to bring up is that depending on what distro you use, um, some of them have set it up so that when you install the package, it'll be added to automatically start up both MPD and IceCast on your system. Some of them don't. In my case, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed does not start it up on boot up, but you can configure that. Um, it's like system CTL enable if you're using system D. Um, if you're using init D, then sorry, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, okay. So, and it looks like uh, we didn't get any errors from IceCast. I'll go ahead and double check that. We do have one other warning, it looks like. Failed to check the status. So, yeah, it looks like the errors are mostly complaining about the fallback mount that we don't have set up. So, and also that we don't have an email put in for our admin email, which is fine. I don't want people emailing me. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll head back into the IceCast system. Oops, we go back to the main URL here. Mm, 
this. Looks like the mount isn't running. Oh, that's why. Because this is one quirk of this system that I have found so far is that if you do stop MPD and NCMPCPP, basically will stop playing the music. So if the music isn't playing, um, then basically what will happen is MPD will be like, I'm not playing anything. Icecast will go, well, then I'll shut down the mount. So you have to make sure the audio is playing in order for you to see the mount file. So if you refresh, yep, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and manage authentication again and create a user. User ad failed, okay. Let's see. Actually, I'm curious. I'm curious if that actually is not what the error is technically saying. We'll see. So. Point list, log in. Authorization page isn't even saying anything. Okay. So go ahead and close that. Let's take a look at what's inside the my auth. Absolutely nothing. Oh, it's because root still has on permissions on group. Let's fix that. And also, I'll be a little more permissive as well. Okay. And stop this cast. And pseudo system CTL stop. MPD, whoops, so if I type it right, and then start MPD, and then start ice cannons. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and refresh this. Still failed. Okay. Huh. I am not sure then, to be honest. <laughs> they must have pushed out an update recently. Changed some features on my auth. Okay. Um, if that's the case, then I'm just going to remove the authentication for now. Just so that way we can also see what it looks like to connect to it through our media player. So I'm just going to comment out this whole thing here. Okay. Okay. So it looks like um, we've got our mount point, our mount point working here. You've got three different file types when it comes to IceCast serving up your MP3 files or your AUG files. Um, you've got an M3U format for your playlist, an XFPF for your playlist, or a VCLT. M3U is kind of more of the widely supported ones. So you can download this file, and then you can play it. So I'll play it in Amarok, for example. That should work. Thank <laughs> you. 
Close those. And hopefully I've got audio working right now. Hmm, okay. Um, so you can also play it through the uh, web player here. So I don't know if you can hear that, but you can play it through um, uh, Firefox or Chrome. Those generally work. Um, or you can play it through the one that I'm, I particularly use is uh, Dead Beef. So if I go ahead and go uh, add location and I can put in um, the actual URL itself. <clears throat> .org. Um, so you can also do the actual raw audio file instead of a playlist. Um, so if you put that location into a media player, then it'll basically just load up the media file as is um, without a playlist. Um, whereas the playlist basically is just a playlist with that entry to that URL. So there's kind of two ways you can load it into your media player. Um, uh, in terms of clients, uh, like I said, Dead Beef works really well. Firefox and Chrome, you can use those. Um, I've used VLC to do it. That works pretty well. If you're on Windows, FUBAR 2000 works pretty well, as well as Winamp, I believe. Um, and then for Android and iOS, um, for Android, you have VLC for Android works really well, I found. Um, and then also, uh, uh, what was another one that works really well on iOS? Not remember the name of it at this point. Tune in box, I think is what it's called. I'm not an iOS guy, so. <laughs> um, How about for managing the stream? Are there some good clients for my wife, like a web client or something? Or something? Um, for managing the stream itself, um, as far as I'm aware, really all it is is just IceCast, uh, the web interface, and then also NCMPCPP. If there's something out there that speaks the MPD protocol that you can use, then you can use that in place of NCMPCPP. Because um, kind of the idea with the architecture of MPD and MPC is that with MPD, all it's literally doing is accepting input from a controller of some kind, whether that's NCMPCPP like we used in this example, or if it's, say, um, an app on a phone or a web-based interface. So you do have some flexibility there. I personally have only used NCMPCPP before, um, so I'm not sure. I can't really comment on the quality of any of your clients. Will this run on a Raspberry Pi? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like I said earlier, as long as you are only got, like, one client and you're only running one, one audio stream, you can do this on a single Raspberry Pi. It's pretty doable. Um, I would probably recommend getting a little bit something beefier if you're going to be doing more audio streams or really high-quality audio streams. So thank you for the question, by the way. Uh, let me just pull up my notes here. Okay. So then the uh, other thing I wanted to really touch on just real quick um, was I've got some links to some resources for documentation. Um, there's a lot of really great docs by MPD and IceCast uh, that are from the official team that are really helpful. Uh, so uh, we've got here the uh, MPD Music Player Daemon Docs, uh, mpd.org, or musicpd.org. Um, and this is specifically talking about the Shout Protocol plugin that they have for interfacing with IceCast. Um, and then you've also got the man pages for MPD. Those work really well as well. Uh, for IceCast, uh, you have the icecast.org website, which has all their documentation. Um, and then this utility called XML Lint. I'm not sure if it's on all distros, but it's on OpenSUSE by default. Op uh, XML Lint is basically a thing that lets you verify the syntax of an XML file. So if you make a mistake in an XML file and IceCast is completely not starting up whatsoever and not cooperating, you can use XML Lint to kind of debug your XML file. Um, and then for NCMPCPP docs, um, you got the official website. Uh, rybczak.net um, and then also Arch Linux actually their wiki has a really good article on NCMPCPP um, and then also like I was showing you earlier you can also, also press 1 in that program to get a helpful shortcut reference um, one other thing I wanted to touch on real quick is there's some actually kind of neat stuff you can do with it this is a thing called Mopity and Mopity basically what it does is it allows you to interface with MPD 
and then integrate Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play into your MPD listening experience. So if you don't have a large music collection, you can use this to kind of work around that. Um, and it's Python-based, so if you're into Python, that's pretty neat. You can kind of tinker around with it. Um, I personally haven't used it myself, but I've spoken to some people who have, and they can assure me that's really good. So I'm taking their word for it and saying, give it a shot and see what you think. Um, and they're claiming also it supports the Raspberry Pi as well. So, um, And then another thing that one of my friends actually made uh, about a month ago, uh, he made a thing that allows you to control your... MPD interface through a chat program called Matrix. Um, basically, you can send commands to uh, the MPD DJ, is what he's calling it, and basically tell it to queue up YouTube URLs, and eventually he's going to be also adding SoundCloud and raw file support, so if you have a music file on a web server somewhere, you can also stream that too. So yeah, you can kind of get an idea of some of the features it has, and then these are kind of the prerequisites you need for that as well. So... That's about it, all I really had to talk about. If you guys want me to try do what-if scenarios, I can answer questions. Uh, I still technically have you for more than half an hour, or if you want to get out early, you can do that too. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So Icecast itself doesn't actually um, have any really way to control it besides just starting and stopping the daemon. Um, how it works or how this infrastructure works is you have MPD taking the raw audio data. Basically, MPD is acting as your sound card, so to speak. And then you're piping that audio data to Icecast to push it over the network and add stuff like authentication and uh, lots of extra streams at the same time, whereas MPD can only do one stream at a time. Um, and then NCMPCPP is basically acting as your media player client that's controlling MPD. So that's kind of how that infrastructure works. Hopefully that answers your question. Yep. Okay, cool. Did I see a gentleman in the back behind you? Or? Well, I, I was just kind of curious. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Actually, um, I run a public radio station that I have a whole bunch of free music on um, that anybody can tune into, and I have it running on a VPS with, I think, two CPU cores and four gigs of RAM, and I'm usually seeing about 50% CPU usage when I have about 20 people connected, just for a perspective. And, so. And as far as the bandwidth, say I don't really have a good bandwidth at home, right? Yeah, you can do that, definitely. Um, um, if you have a provider that gives you unmetered bandwidth, you don't have to worry about it too much. Although, um, if you're going to be like constantly streaming music to a client 24-7, um, and you're going to be streaming, you know, something that's high quality, like 512K, then maybe the amount of bandwidth you're using can be a concern. Um, but generally, if you have like a 100 meg unmetered box at like a data center, um, you're totally fine. And 100 megs is quite a bit in terms of music streaming, so... Oh, cool. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, MPD, MPD's been around for a while, so there's a lot of stuff that's been made to kind of integrate, integrate with it. So whatever works best for your workflow. Again, I can't comment on anything else besides NCMPCPD because that's all I've been using. But definitely experiment and try it out. That's kind of how MPD is designed to be. So, anybody else? Yes, this is. Uh, it's going to be on the Linux Fest YouTube channel, right? I believe the website. A website? Okay. And, and also, I'll edit the uh, posting for this session. I'm actually going to be recording the, um, I'm recording the screen, and then also, um, I'm also going to be putting up the config files for people to look at as well. So, yeah, not a problem. And then also, um, I also have my contact info down here as well. So, if you want to get in touch with me, ask me questions, or if you need help with something, um, mm -hmm. I'll try and respond pretty quick. So... Anybody else? It's, uh, yeah. So I, I absolutely love it. And the, it's all the, all the configuration stuff is totally above my head. I love that. <laughs> is, 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 is there a, like a GUI for someone like me that, that, that can load it up and say, oh, Sean, do you want to do this? And I can say yes or no. Like, 
Um, unfortunately, Icecast, I'm not aware of, has a GUI for the configuration. Um, MPD might, although I'm a little bit doubtful, um, mainly just because of the way a lot of Linux people use it. We love to, we love to live in config files. So, um, but it's okay to be totally overwhelmed because these are pretty big config files. So well, you just have to keep in mind that about 90 to 95% of it is all comments. So typically what I'll, I'll do is instead of just working with the config file I got, I'll copy that to another directory, and then I'll create an entirely new config and just put in exclusively the options I want. So it's only like 20 lines. So thank you for asking, by the way. Anybody else? No? You're totally free to go if you want. I don't have to keep you here. What's up? If you're, if you're like streaming this to like, say, like VLC on your phone or something like that, mm -hmm. you can like skip playing pod functionality on the VLC work on the phone, or do you have to go through and see? No, unfortunately. The case is, is that you have to make sure you have an app that will talk to the MPD servers that you're running. Because um, if you do those play, pause, skip, it's actually controlling the local media player on the phone or whatever device you're using. So that's a good point, though. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. This was my first time presenting, so definitely give me feedback if you have any feedback. I'd love to hear it, because I'd love to come back again and speak on something else. Or maybe this again, if people like it. I'm wondering about licensing. Licensing? Yeah. Um, I looked into it a little bit. Um, there's basically kind of two options you can go with it, um, depending on what sort of music you're playing. Uh, each of the record labels basically offers like a deal with a streaming company, and then basically for like, I think, 50 bucks a month or something like that, you can basically say, unlimited streaming, I can stream all the time, any day of the week, that sort of thing. Like radio stations, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, stuff. yeah, you're under the same restrictions, basically. But if you're setting up that authentication stuff, then nobody's going to be able to find it. And, right. Yeah. But again, like I said, disclaimer, if you do this and somebody comes after you legally, you didn't hear it from me. Yeah, thank you, Marcus. <laughs> Not a problem. First off, awesome job. Thank you. And secondly, the my auth, you did Chone instead of um, come on, on the 755. Mm, that's right. I totally yes. forgot. <laughs> so that might have been what was for me. I, I didn't want to say anything. That's cool. It's cool. Actually, I appreciate the, the correction. So what's up? Uh, oh, See you later. I, I was asking, so like, could a, uh, could a record label say, you know what, we don't want to spend any money on actually streaming this stuff. We want to go through, would, would they hire someone to make this and to have like 100,000 listeners and to say, you know what, we're going to, we have this new artist mm -hmm. and but we don't want to, we're not ready for the CD yet. We're going to pump it to the world and see, could that be an option? Yeah. Um, typically what I've found is a lot of like uh, universities that have their own radio station yeah. will run this so you can yeah. listen to it online. That's typically the most common use case I've seen. Uh, that and also hobbyists set it up so they can stream like a typical, you know, specific genre of music or something like that. So, so yeah, there's some flexibility. I don't really, can't really think of a situation like you're describing, but... Like, like it's like flip from... From, it would be from where I want to uh, stream my my album of Lincoln Park to my friends at school, mm -hmm. flipping where I'm... I, I, I'm You're signing record I, I, deals I'm, and stuff well, with... I I'm, have my own, like, my own couple of... I've been learning how to play the guitar, mm. and I have my own stuff. And then someone says to me, oh, hey, can you... So instead of having it posted on SoundCloud, mm -hmm. I want to host it on my own computer, and then I can just give you the yeah, and you just log on and listen. Yeah, if you want to. Uh, the only downside is they can't really like pick what they want to listen to. You'll oh, be in control because it'll be like a radio station. Oh yes, yes, yes. But at the same time, you know that is a possibility. You could do that as well. I would probably actually go with both. I would do SoundCloud tracks online, yeah. and then I would also run the radio station, so people have the option of either. So very cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Awesome. Hey, not a problem. I'm happy to help. And if you need help with the config files, like you were saying, if you're overwhelmed, <laughs> just send me an email. It's right there. So, awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Not a problem. What's up? I got a tangential question. Go um, for it. Your whole expertise. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I've got a students down in like, the school district. Oh, cool. Cool. So, uh, uh, 107 high school uh, 
schools in general, some mm. high schools, but usually the high schools are abandoned. Yeah. The students <laughs> watch and detain from those opinions. And it's a very, we've done studies on it, and we've done 75 on a slow day, percent of them are abandoned, to 90% of them are abandoned. It's just that. Yeah. And we're not watching the video. Yeah. And so I came to this, because we're looking at alternatives of uh, if we're going to follow YouTube to certain user groups, mm -hmm. then we want to provide an alternative. Mm. Or what have you seen in your experience? Because when I went to university, this was before. Yeah, it was before this, everyone this stuff. Had, yeah. You know, sorry, everyone had a Walkman or a Walkman. Yeah. Yeah. CD player. Yeah. 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 And so uh, it was all personal. And, and some part it is, but as soon as there's a computer in front of them, as soon as there's a lot of hardware, it's screaming. Mm. So, what's what's going on with the industry right now? Because there's no such thing as YouTube sound in there. If yeah. Have it solve all the problems. It's yeah. A video bandwidth issue. Uh, and us like doing this is like a radio station. So we consider it as a student radio station and we broadcast it, queue it up, and, and we push them to it. Yeah, my only yeah. Choice. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that they are always choosing what music they want exactly. to hear. So. And so, but if you said, oh, hey, it's a, a junior's hour, and we're putting up music that they yeah. have some interest, they shift some of our bandwidth. Um, I or feel like this is a yeah. That's a YouTube sound on. That's that's ideal. Mm. There's not really anything I can think of that explicitly just pulls the video file out of the audio stream uh, with YouTube because YouTube kind of packages it together, yeah. especially if you just go to the YouTube website, because um, which that's what most youth are going to do. So they're just they're just yeah. being like, I'm just going to pull up my music that I like to listen to on YouTube, yeah, and minimize the tab, playlists. yeah, and playlists and stuff. Yeah. So I've written YouTube. In video playlists. I just written YouTube with all kinds of features. Uh, but this is this is fifty thousand simultaneous users. Oh, we, yeah, we have this is a school district. Oh, okay. And we're having bandwidth issues. Uh, as soon as we increase bandwidth, yeah. then, then they're like, oh, it's totally working. And then they just get it more, right? Yeah. And so there's, a, there's never an upper limit as soon as. Yeah, it probably. Open two windows. Probably, I would say, actually, probably your best bet then would be to um, either throttle YouTube down or impose uh, QoS rules so that YouTube is deprioritized. Um, and say like you know something like um, you know your students' websites so or class website. Yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think this thing is not quite yeah, polished say, enough. Yeah. Hey, everybody, put all your music files here. Yeah. You can play them anytime you want. But yeah. Not everyone has access to them. And yeah. Yeah, you're in a tough situation there. Um, well, I would drive. Yeah. yeah. Or at least North America. Yeah. Here's a first world problem. Yeah, first world problem indeed. Um, High school thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, over at the school I go to, Bellevue College, um, they haven't really done any sort of uh, bandwidth throttling, uh, as far as I can tell. So, yeah, because it really harms the uh, the users, and then on top of that, it's like. You know, there's the whole net neutrality thing as well, yes, where like everybody has to. Yeah. 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 You did good, man. You Thanks. did great, bro. Well, we're going to go like in this other thing, but then like in a little bit, be like lunchtime. Come, come find me, man. Yeah, definitely. Or, or just hit me up. I got my phone. So. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Thank you. So yeah, man, you're in a really tough predicament. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, I'd love to be able to. I'd like to find something that um, be a more elegant than this. I mean, this is cool for geeks and nerds like me because it's like all oh, command line sort of stuff oh, like that. It. But and I get it because I do all that as well. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I beginner Linux beginner is still. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I tried to make sure that it was like at least somewhat followable, and then I also made sure to record all this stuff so that way they can go over it again and again too, so yeah. they can kind of learn. But it is kind of 
it is kind of difficult to try and not drop them, in, you know, head first into the water of config files, yeah. but you, have to. you kind of have to. Everything is a config file. It would so. be cool if uh, you said, hey, take out your phones. This is my radio station. I was considering doing that, or but... You set up a radio station here, mm -hmm. and you're playing music, but you don't have any speakers you don't know because you're on the phone. Yeah. So here's the web address for it. Yeah, I was considering... It, totally crash this whole building. Yeah, that's so the, my, was my concern is like the... the yeah. Then you can come up and say, well, how many people are connected? Mm -hmm. and, okay, I'm going to reduce that down to just two. Years yeah, so... Okay, who's got it? Actually, I'll show you, you here. You can, you can see how that plays with the crowd. I'll show you here real quick. In uh, IceCast, you can actually listen, the, uh, listen to the people who are connected, and you can choose to kick them oh, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it also shows their IP and then how long they've been connected and then also what their user agent is, so you can tell kind of what they're using. Can you do that if you were still playing off local host, but it connects the VPE? So basically, this is where wherever the, the computer that's running IceCast is, yeah. you just access this URL. Um, like so access. Yeah, I'm just doing it on my local host as a demo, so, but you can... You, like, if you were going to do this demo again, mm -hmm. how would you push it so that um, everyone could access it? Well, that's the thing, is, like, I don't know how good the Wi-Fi is here, so... This college, so I'll give you to you to... Yeah, either either that or, like, just run it over the local network and then have them connect over the local network and then okay. the subnet. Yeah. Yeah. Just temporarily. Yeah, just temporarily. Yeah, I mostly, yeah, I only stayed on the local host just for the sake of eliminating one possible pain point. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is that you can just change all of that stuff and then have it go out either to local network or the internet pretty easily. So you just change the IP. Yeah, maybe next time do that. Change yeah. Change the IP and then say, okay, we're live. Yeah. I'll internet. definitely try and I see if I can work that out. Building, <laughs> let's try it out. And it's a very low quality audio internet. stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course. Yeah, definitely. So. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, well, thank you very much. What was your name? By Jeff. Way? Jeff. Nice yeah. to meet you, Jeff. You too. Yeah. Good luck with your situation over there at your yeah, school. Sounds like there's no, no resolution. Yeah, it's not an easy fix. Oh. Good luck with that, man. <laughs> Howdy. Thanks for the talk. That was, it was awesome. Probably. Thank you. My name's Kyle. Nice to meet you, Kyle. But yeah, um, oh, I'm actually excited about this because I'm a big like. Music there. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, cool. Like, yeah, 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 cool. yeah, I say, oh, I work too for the worst. Like, hmm? But a lot of times, Spotify doesn't even have some of the stuff that I find. Yeah. So this will be like, yeah, like, 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 just like, you know, yeah. 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 I think there's a port of IceCast for FreeBSD. Let me double check, actually. Because that would be curious. Because what I'm trying to do at home is set up a FreeBSD server that I can access like books and music stuff on. So it looks like there's a tarball for both Linux and Unix. So okay. you should be good. And there might even be a package for it on BSD. Okay. Yeah, like a port. Yeah. Awesome. So and then worst case scenario, you can just go and get the sources and compile it. Right. <laughs> yeah, big deal. Yeah, okay. big deal. So, All right. well, yeah, I appreciate it. Not a problem. And if you have questions or if you need help, you can just email me. Okay. So I'd be happy to help you. All right, sounds good. Thank, Thank you, man. You. Take care. Take care. Nice to meet you, Kyle. Nice to meet you, too. Hey. I like being helpful. That's what I do. How'd it go? Pretty good. Yeah? Um, there was a last-minute change that happened to IceCast uh, that broke one thing. But other than that, it was pretty good. Mm, don't kill that.